Well, Nick, on the drive up here is uh, a little bit sketchy. It's starting to snow, but uh, I'm not used to anything else when I go fishing with you. So, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. I think when the weather tanks, it's par for the course for when we go fishing. But uh, I think it's actually going to be pretty good today. So the ice came off. I think here it came off five days ago. Oh, perfect. so yeah, lakes just starting to turn over, and the cool weather. I mean, the water's only nine degrees anyway, so the cool weather's not going to do too much negative damage. I don't think. Fish should be a little more active, I guess, uh, with the little bit of heat we had last week. So Yeah, it's been pretty warm, and I think, though, the nice thing is cool, overcast. Those fish will just move in shallow. They're going to feel secure, tough to see into the water when it's, you know, lots of glare. And looking around the shoreline, we're already seeing a lot of fish move in water that I know isn't any deeper than 18 inches. That's perfect. So, so. well, let's head out on the water, catch some uh, tiger trout and rainbow trout. <laughs> getting quite you know not getting the larger fish on the indicators yet at least but uh, we'll sort of see what happens here it's pretty it's pretty cold to be fishing the sinking lines it's we think it's probably one degree because every once in a while we get some snow There he goes. <laughs> so much for underwater. Another fish here on the indicator. They've really turned on to the to the indicator type of presentation here in the last uh, half hour. So this one actually took the coronament, took a nice 14 flat coronament. Nice shallow water, early spring rainbow. There he is. Nice one, Nick. Nice, yeah, beauty fish. They're, they're really fat. We're fishing in about eight feet of water right over the first weed beds of the year, which is when you're fishing early season, I think it's important that you find, you find the weed beds because the weed beds are gonna have the insects living in them that are uh, attracting fish to go in there and feed so let's see if I'm gonna... not the biggest fish you're ever gonna see but uh look at how fat that girl is there all the colors yeah. on that one too yeah i love when they get dark like that in the spring hey so i got another uh, nice little rainbow on the chronomid so early spring, I mean, the chronomids are absolutely tiny. Most of them are something like, I don't know, size 22. I'm not gonna use that, but uh, there's the odd one about a size 14. So what I'm running is a leech, which is probably my favorite, uh, everybody's favorite early spring fly. And then uh, if you only could pick one, then below it, I'm running a size 14 black chronomid because, oh, because oh. every once in a while you're seeing, uh, you're seeing a few of them show up in the feeding samples. So. I've got, just checking the hook point on this. So you got, yeah, size 14 hooks, okay. Just sort of flopped her off, but yeah, size 14 black, bit of a silver bead there for some attraction and it's been picking up pretty well. So I hope I can get another one. Go ahead. Another nice rainbow trout, just had a little lull in the action, but a lull in the action's about 10 minutes today. So can't complain at all. Yeah, I'm but, uh, keeping more eyes on my indicator than the camera right now because I'm probably going to watch it go down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I've got a rainbow trout and a nice one too. Nice. Oh, look at the colors on that, on the chronomid. Oh, just the lightest take too. Like I just saw that indicator just barely go down. But uh, yeah. Nice pink colors. And I think Pretty part chunky of, yeah. too. I think part of the reason they're on the chronomids now is the wind has really slowed down. So we, we have a nice little, you know, four or five inch chop. Spit the hook. But we, we don't have a two foot chop like we started with. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's pretty breezy. We we're almost gonna get seasick there, but uh, kinda died down a little bit there. Oh, yeah. There we go. Nice. I'll let her go. Back. Beauty. Well, let's let's see if they keep hitting the. Crowd. 
chronomids because anytime you can get some consistent chronomid action, it's a pretty fun day actually. We were chronomitting for an hour or two, and it was it was really good. It wasn't uh, wasn't the best we'd ever had, but it, it was consistent. We were getting hits every five or ten minutes minimum, uh, and then it slowly started to to well, it slowed down. So uh, we gave we gave it a bit of a rest, had a bite to eat, and uh, we went back to the sinking lines. And it's just we've just been lighting them up on the sinking lines. And I think I think this early in the year, the the chronomid hatch it only it's only going to last a couple hours during the during the day and uh, the rest of the day the fish are hungry because they started eating but uh fly pops out but they're looking for those more opportunistic food sources so this guy took uh, a still water nymph kind of looks like a scud or or a little damsel or a bait fish or something like that just move it real slow with a lot of pauses and there we go just a beautiful early season beautiful early season rainbow we're gonna put her back so uh she grows up a little more and when we get her in the fall, she'll be three or four inches bigger. <laughs> so literally the first cast after Nick caught that last one, I uh, hooked into this one here. So kind of what we're fishing in here right now, we're fishing pretty shallow because the ice just came off the lake a few days ago. But uh, usually it's pretty fun this time of year because you can fish in like four to ten feet of water. and. The fish, like even the largest fish of the of the lake, are actually down in the shallows feeding as the sun warms up. Oh, nice rainbow! It's coming up. Not a very <laughs> big guy, but awesome colors. And this cold water, they just pull. It's great fight, yeah. yeah. It's been a really good day, really fun, fun action, and look at the beautiful colors on that. Hook, I think popped right out. Yeah, I think I think it's important in this pre-turnover type condition that. Uh, you have to actually cover some water. You know, in, in cold water, I don't think you get those areas of the lake where every fish is in one kind of spot. They're going to be in similar structure types, but they're going to be spread out. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we've covered, you know, we fish a few different shoals today, a few different weed edges, and, oh, beauty. Oh, he might flop out. And some had fish and some didn't, so don't get set in one spot. And if the action shuts down... There. You may need to, uh, yeah, nice fish. You may need to move. Exactly. Just got to be resilient and uh, keep searching for them a little bit. Yeah. Too. Look for those Look for those weed beds. You know, in addition to them having the, having the bugs and, and bait fish and things like that that the rainbows are keying on, they're dark. Yeah. This, they're going to collect more sunlight and uh, they're going to warm up a little faster. And that's what we've always found, I guess, early season is a uh, place that's getting heated up the most and has a lot of bug activity is usually and the it, best spots to concentrate. And, it, and until the water is 12 or 13 degrees Celsius, you want that warmer part of the lake. Yeah. yeah. All right. 100%. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm done holding the camera, so I'm going to go fishing again. And that's 
tiger trout on a chronomid. That's pretty sweet. I've never caught one on a chronomid before. So I'm pretty excited about this one. I like the colors on that. They are turning on the feed. We're hoping here we're gonna have a good evening. There's about a size 14 coronamid. I can't get over that the back swimmer, geez. And then a whole bunch, about another half a dozen smaller water boatmen, and dozens and dozens and dozens of coronamids. And they're alive. This guy's been feeding hard, so we're not gonna waste any more time. We're gonna uh, dump these guys back in the lake here. Unbelievable. <laughs> and we're gonna hopefully go catch a few more fish. I think we will. Wow, we're still doing really well here on the sinking lines and. Got a nice rainbow actually here. I thought it was uh, something else, but got one of these nice. Oh, I just can't get over the colors of these fish. Oh, he's is he wrapped for me? Oh yeah, this is a bit of a. It's gonna be a project fish. I think. Yes, sir. We changed spots again, and. Uh, a little equipment malfunction with my reel on my sinking line. It's a pretty old reel. It's about 15, 16 years old. So I have to go back to the floating line, but uh, I'm not complaining at all. This is pretty, pretty consistent action all day on whatever we're using. So, oh, hey. little jump. What do we have here? We've got a rainbow. Nice colors on it. In the early part of the season here, we've got some decent coloring on them, and it's on the chronomid. So, they've been decent hatch so far, actually, for this early in the season. And yeah, I think it's May 6th. Yeah, so Ooh, anytime nice. we can get some nice chronomid action, we'll, we'll definitely take advantage of that. Get this, get this gal back in the water. Nice fishing. We're gonna try a booby here so I can fish really, really shallow water without hanging up on the bottom and uh, tying it on with a loop knot so we supposedly get some nice wiggle wiggle. Breaks is so nice. <laughs> Some piggybacks on our ice. There's <laughs> not a lot of water. <laughs> Alright, so the one trick with the loop knot is once you're once you've got the loop and it's all tied through, you actually pull on the tag end, moisten it, and that's what's gonna make it seat really nice, I find. I'm gonna clip that, but uh, Booby fly gets a nice, nice little space to wiggle. Not that it matters. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta find a lane between all the ice up know. there, I guess. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> a mirage after all, ain't so it? So we've made our way here to the uh, the one slit of open water that's not in 30 feet. Yeah, there's not much open water today, but... Not uh, yet. we got to do with what we have here and try some indicator fishing in about 18 feet of water. So we got the bobbers. I think I might be getting micro taps there. Alright, so 
first fish of the day. It is on the, oh no, it's on the micro leech and it is a, what do we got? We got a rainbow. Right, this actually, hey. you know, not big, but uh, nice and chunky. And any anytime you're fly fishing November 10th on the lakes, uh, it's pretty special. You're just sort of taking whatever you get. So let's see if I can get a little bit of a handle on this guy. Oh, oh real cold water, but you know what? Nicely conditioned rainbow. No, not big, 12 inches, but nice and fat, nice and firm. And I'm not gonna play around with them too long because that's too bloody cold to do that. But uh, <laughs> it's too cold to be fishing sinking lines all the time. So uh, we're fishing maybe six feet down. Tim's got a couple nice tigers. We've had some equipment malfunction with our cameras and stuff. It's pretty cold, so the batteries aren't lasting. I just pulled a nice little rainbow here again. So we're in, we're anchored in 10 feet of water, but casting to about six. There you go. A little bit of a shot with some color maybe sort of see yeah, nice one. he's got some parasites you can see the parasites all up and down the sides like these are not good eating fish you, you, you keep one even in cold water thinking it's gonna be good and they all have black spot on the inside it's just it's not very good so catch release is the rule out here and uh, yeah so anyways we're, we're fishing we're anchored in 10 feet of water really really cold it's 42 degrees and uh, hang those leeches low close to the bottom Nice and slow. Nice and slow. All right. Hey, we got a fish here on the floating line. And it's, I got two leeches on there, so it's gonna be on one of the leeches anyways. One's a little bit bigger, and the other one's a little brown mic. Looks like a tiger. Oh, yeah, I think you might be right. Yeah, it's a tiger trout. Took the, uh... Not bad, not a bad fish. Flyita. He took my top fly. It's a little bit bigger of a, a leech there. Yeah. Nice spotting on this one. Oh, come on. Get in there. There we go. Hey, hey. Not a bad fish. We didn't get skunked. <laughs> Tiger trout cross between a. Hold it a bit closer to me here. Oh, he's got a little kipe on him there, so it's a male. Got some parasites on him. Mixed still. between a. Uh, yeah, yeah right here. Dogs, so. But nice, nice trout. It's a mix between a brown trout and a brook trout. They just stocked these in Alberta. And you're encouraged to release them, which you have to. There we go. Oh, that water's freezing cold. But uh, that's to be expected when there's ice on it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so we're heading back across the lake. We might try, uh, we're gonna see if that spot where we did the ice bash at the start has any open water at it. And it looks like my friend's out there. So we might go check, might go check that spot out. But for the most part, it's been a great, great late fall day. It's about as late as we're gonna get. You can tell the lake hasn't even really opened up much more. Uh, our ice path hasn't opened up anymore. It's just one boat's width wide. And uh, we're just pretty fortunate that the fishing was so good today wasn't great but you know what when you can get a couple dozen fish in November on the fly rod uh, it's pretty enjoyable to be on a lake so I uh, hope you enjoyed watching us and if we get another fish well you might see that one too but uh, thanks for watching oh hey you just dug, digging me into the weeds though <laughs> are you I hope I'm not around in the egg girl. Girl. I might be
Westernsportfishing.ca <laughs> <laughs>